So thanks everybody uh, for joining today. Um, and thanks to Barag and Bill and Rebecca and all the FUSE team members to put this together. I know it takes a team. Um, in the spirit of talking about tools, um, the concepts today with subset listings, I really hope to convey that there's opportunity to develop new tools here. Um, subset listings themselves have been around for a long time. There's nothing new there. But item stores have not. And right about now, if we were in person, would be where I, as a statistician, might want to, to, to do a survey to see how many people in the audience have, may have heard of or used item stores. Uh, without that, I still think uh, as we go through these slides that maybe there may be some more technical programming aspects and let's not focus on them. Let's focus on the concepts. Uh, I could always answer questions or provide code at a later point if, if people want the technical details. So in the next 25 minutes, um, I'd like to introduce these things called item stores, and I call them the mysterious item store. Uh, it's sort of an in, a joke with me. Uh, last year, I was able to share some of these ideas with some Belgian friends at a Belgian SaaS user group, and somebody said it's very mysterious. Uh, it sounds better when somebody with a French accent says it, says it but um, they are a little bit mysterious. So we'll try to introduce what they are, how to use them, um, and then we're going to look at proc report, how they're used with proc report. And I won't go into the details about programming of proc report. Um, many of us uh, still use proc report for all of our listings. I do know that some people might use data null. Um, but for this exercise, it'll all be proc report with by group processing. And then at the end, we'll try to demonstrate how we can have some programming techniques to create a single file that has a lot of utility. So as I mentioned, data reviews are not listings, are not new, they've been around. We have all sorts of other tools that are being developed, interactive tools to allow people to review data. Yet, uh, I do work for a CRO, and we still do get plenty of requests for things like data review listings, patient profiles. We also get requests from the Office of Scientific Investigations for a, what I've referred to often as a site profile, a set of listings in a single file with a very specific structure. And we'll see an example of that in a minute. Our goal is to have that single file with useful structure, and I say for the intended user. Maybe it's by site for OSI, maybe it's by patient for some internal review, maybe it's by some other important subset uh, for our clinical colleagues. But the key is to have all the subgroup records displayed together uh, so that they can actually review. Yeah. For some reason, it just stopped. Apologies for that. Uh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> wouldn't be me if something didn't happen. Um, so here's an example of, uh, this is an actual screenshot that came from a request from OSI. And at first it looks like a very structured PDF where we have data within study and then all the listings for a particular site displayed under a bookmark for that site. So here's just an example of grouping all the data for a particular site together. So why item stores? What makes me think item stores would be a, a something to consider here? Well, I know I haven't introduced them yet, but I will in a minute. I think of processing at an earlier point of time and then doing something with that output later. Uh, and here, maybe we're creating individual listings over time. Maybe it's several programmers, maybe it's over several days or several weeks. But at the end, we wanna do something with that output. Here we want to combine them into a single file with a very specific structure. A uh, couple of side notes here is we're going to talk about proc report and listings, but you know if you found yourself working with large amounts of data or statistical models that might take a lot of computing, maybe you can do all that at one point in time when system was low, system use is low, and still access those results at a later point in time. So uh, for us, these item stores are going to allow pretty custom reports, uh, whether it's with ODS layout, 
or we're just going to provide a single file at the end here. One of the things to keep in mind is we're going to regenerate output, but we're not going to rerun the original SAS procedures. Okay, and that's something important to keep in mind when we look at these examples. So what is a, um, an item store, the mysterious item store? Well, if you look at the image on the right, that's what a four-year-old with a computer and a keyboard thinks an item store looks like. Uh, but it really is a highly structured SAS file. And it's a SAS library member. It's like a data set. It's like a template catalog or formats catalog. It has a very specific structure to it. And it contains bits and pieces of information. What I mean by that is procedure output. Uh, we'll see some examples in a few minutes with Proc Univariate, but you know, very often we're running SAS procedures. There are multiple pages of output. And with item stores, we can access bits and pieces of that output independently. It is a highly organized file with directories and subdirectories and tables and graphs. Now, don't think of this as a table per se, as a summary table. Um, Proc Report creates a table. Proc Freak creates a table. It's just a, don't think of it as a formal summary. We're going to create these with ODS document statements and access them with something called Proc Document. And again, there may be some technical programming here. Uh, I'm more than happy to share code and share ideas afterwards. But let's focus on the concepts. Here's a simple Proc Freak uh, using the SAS help.fish data. Um, why that? We're in a clinical trial setting. Well, it's, it's not clinical trial data, uh, and there's no confidentiality issues. We're just going to put what I call the ODS document sandwich. And if you've programmed with ODS enough and you've seen enough SAS talks, this concept of an ODS sandwich means you have a starting statement and ending statement. Um, I'm going to send this proc freak output to uh, an item store and a permanent location defined by a live name in one. And I put it in a permanent location so I can access it later. Um, there's the write option, which essentially is saying overwrite it if it's there. There are other options you can look at with ODS document. Now, you can't just look inside these item stores, not very easily anyway. Um, and if you were, you weren't, you're not actually looking at the results of the procedure, you're looking at the structure of the internal item store. And if we use proc document here with this list statement, the list statement I think is probably one of the most useful statements in proc document that I've found because it always allows me to see uh, what's happening here. And you can see that it consists of a couple of directories and a table. Now, I had said earlier I can recreate that output without rerunning the original procedure. So here, uh, maybe I just want to do what's called replay. I want to replay that original output into a new file, maybe a new PDF, maybe it was a different style, who knows. But the key is it's done at a later point in time. I'm very being very generic here by just saying replay, and you can do that, or you can replay a very specific table uh, and we'll see some examples in a minute. The key here is we're replaying at a later point in time. We're regenerating output, but we're not rerunning the original procedure. And here's just a screenshot of what we might expect. Go on to move on something a little more interesting than a proc freak. Let's look at proc univariate. Again, I'm just going to do an ODS document sandwich. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Note that I have a var statement and a histogram statement. So if you were to run this, you might expect to get many pages of output. Uh, think of that as many individual pieces of output that we might want to access. Again, if I want to look inside, it's a proc document with a list statement. If I were to run this, um, I get something that maybe is, looks more interesting. I know you maybe you turn your head sideways and maybe you could see this. It starts to look like a Windows directory structure with things inside those, um, but it consists of directories and tables. And maybe here you can start to better see there are different pieces of information that we can access at a later point in time without actually rerunning proc univariate. And I can do that uh, using 
proc document this time again uh, rather than just saying replay which would replay everything i'm going to replay just one specific thing maybe i'm only interested in the quantile i can replay just that table of information and you'd see the expected result is i only get the quantiles we're not restricted to a single procedure i can put multiple SAS procedures inside an item store. Um, here's just combining to the proc freak and the proc univariate. And if I wanted to look inside with proc document and a list statement, you can see that, you know, I do have directories and tables. And these directories are informative based on the procedure that created them. I can replay one or more pieces of information, again, independently. Uh, I don't have to rerun proc freak and I don't have to rerun proc univariate, but I can now put both of those pieces of information in a single file rather easily. And here's yet another screenshot of PDF, uh, where you can see that I can just get the information I want from those two SAS procedures in a single file. Now you might note at this, this screenshot that the bookmark structure, we have the proc freak and the proc univariate. So we can think of the, the directories in those tables as coming uh, tied to the, the bookmark structure itself. So we wanna kind of see how this applies to proc report. As I said earlier, uh, for me at least, and many folks I know, we are using proc report for our listings. And I don't want to go into the details about proc report itself, uh, other than some what I call minor updates. Uh, to create an item store, it's simply adding ODS document sandwich. But I'm thinking ahead, and I've learned the hard way, so we now uh, acknowledge it now that we might want to do a couple of updates that are specific to proc report. And when I First started working with these, I thought they were a pain, but the reality is, is once you do them once, they end up in your code and you no longer have to think about it. Uh, the minor updates are gonna be adding a contents equal option to provide some text that you want in your bookmark itself. Uh, the other thing we're gonna add is a flag. This is a dummy variable. It's set to one for every record and it has this break statement at the bottom uh, to reset the contents. Now, there's some SAS papers about why we have to do this. Uh, I never really took the time. It has to do with the internal processing of proc report. Uh, nevertheless, it's easy to do and it solves my problem. What we're trying to avoid here is some unnecessary bookmark levels because we want that nice polished single file. If we were to look at what's inside an item store from proc report, maybe it's not so exciting we see some directories and tables there's nothing um, uh, obvious other than there's directories and tables but if we were to add a by statement a by variable maybe we could do this proper report by site or by patient or by some other subgroup we start to see this internal structure change and i say well there's the table for the first by group there's a table for the second by group and third and fourth and so on. And remember this item store are bits and pieces of procedure output that I can access independently. So maybe I can create an item store for my demographics and an item store for baseline characteristics and, and other listings. And now I could think about all of the information for site one, which would be by group one and putting that together all of the information for site two, i.e. by group two, and putting it all together into a single document. And that's what we're gonna do. Um, but before we show that example, uh, we're gonna think about accessing parts independently. And here, uh, conveniently, site number two is the second by group. I can replay just site two data with this type of statement. But there's also the capabilities of using a where statement. And when you have a by variable, you can use the value of the by variable with a where statement in proc document. I don't typically do this, but maybe you're starting to wonder, well, that 
that tells me that the value of the vi variable is in the item store and I can use it, especially when it comes to automation. So here's an example with the end goal. We have a PDF. Uh, this is just a screenshot. We have some bookmarks for each site and we have listings uh, that pertain to that site grouped together. So how are we gonna use item stores? Well, let's first create individual item stores for all those individual listings. Maybe we have multiple programmers over time doing this, as long as they're all using by group processing with the same by variable, we end up with a set of item stores that now we can use to create this single document. We're gonna create a new item store using proc document. And to do that, we're gonna create directories for each site using what we call a make statement. And then we're gonna copy those corresponding tables for that site from all those individual item stores. Uh, for demonstration today, we're gonna use set label statements to add the text that we want in each bookmark, although that can be uh, eliminated with macros. So let's build one. Um, and again, this might be technical for some people and I apologize for that. So just keep the ideas in mind. Uh, let's create a new item store. And the first thing I want to do is make a directory to start putting things in. So I'll make section or make sec. It's just a label. Call it what you want. Let's add it to it. Add a label to it. Uh, notice that the SAS appends a sequence number here. So even though I'm making a directory named sec, uh, SAS creates sec pound one. And that's okay. We'll take advantage of that with macros later. I'm going to copy the by group information for site one, this by group one, from the demographics to this directory that I just created. Add a label to it, which is the listing number. Copy the baseline characteristics table for by group one, which is site one to this directory. And again, add a label to it. So we have this block of code where I'm able to copy all of those tables for just site one into a particular directory. I can repeat that for site two very easily. I'm just gonna make another folder. I can call it stack, I can call it the same thing, and SAS will automatically increment the sequence number for me. So keep in mind now that when I look at these individual item stores, I wanna copy these tables to this new directory that I just created. We're just going to go to those back to those individual item stores for each of our listings and pick off information for site two, which we know is by group number two. And I could repeat this for uh, site three, but there's not enough room on the screen for you. If I looked at this item store I just created, you could see I have a directory for each site, two tables within that site. And if I were to replay this, I simply get the bookmarking structure I want, all the listings for each site within that are grouped together. So just to recap, you know, not to get bogged down in the code, we generated those listings over time, different people, different days, as long as they're stored permanently. Each of those listings was using the same by group processing and we created an item store for each one. Once all those things were done, we created a new item store where we just structured it so that all of the listings for each site were grouped together and replayed them into a PDF. Just a couple of side notes. Um, these out, original output files, those original RTF or PDF or however you created them, they're not actually used here and can be discarded. And that may be what's one of the things that makes this different than other approaches. There are many good techniques for combining outputs into a single file, many of them post-process the actual output files. They stack those RTFs together or put those PDFs together, maybe some sort of scripting. We're not actually touching those original output files. What we are using <laughs> is the item stores that go with them. Um, this ODS this destination, uh, sorry, Item stores are independent of ODS destination. 
it's just the procedure output. So unless you start embedding, say, RTF code, uh, these item stores can be replayed in other destination and other styles. You get the same output, it just looks very different. So concluding, concluding thoughts in these site vary or site listings are using by group processing, we can get a very predictable structure to these mysterious item stores. And since they're predictable, uh, automation is a natural extension. I had mentioned earlier in my examples that site one was by group one and site two is by group two and so forth. We can eliminate those constraints. We can get the information we need using ODS table properties associated with PROC document. You'd have to call it twice um, to get things like uh, the paths of the individual tables. You also get the value of the by variable. And with those, you can now create SAS data sets. You can now use those to create macros. Um, and it, automation is straightforward. We didn't add the study level bookmarks that were needed in, in the OSI requests. Uh, honestly, that can be done manually with Adobe. Um, but if I wanted to program it, I can. I just have to make a, a higher level directory to put all the sites within each study together. And hopefully you can see that this extends maybe naturally to patient profiles. In terms of item stores, they continue to be mysterious, but they are easy to use and they're easy to create and use at later points in time. You know, we just used one example here to combine parts of those individual item stores to get this, uh, a single file with the structure we want. Um, we actually use this for other things, not just subset listings, but if you wanted to combine all your TLFs together, you can easily do that with item stores. Uh, as I mentioned, it can be independent of ODS destination as long as you don't have things like embedded RTF code in the procedure output itself. Um, and last, these item stores really uh, open the door for customized reporting, where you can create all that individual procedure output at one point in time and create very custom reports later. For example, maybe you want uh, to use ODS layout to create a single page or multiple pages with very specific output from multiple procedures. You can do that if you generate the item stores for those procedures, generate your layout, and then just access the bits and pieces of information you want. And with that, um, if there are any questions, Feel free to contact with me. I love to share this kind of information. I do think it is a tool or an idea that can extend to many other areas of reporting. I also think it's not widely used, which I appreciated the opportunity to, to share that with everybody today.